Hi everyone, it's Professor Rako here. Uh, today we are going to cover the extinguishment of debt. Uh, you might also hear this referred to as the retirement of debt. And basically what this is referring to is when we pay off the bonds payable at the end of the life of the bonds. All right, so there's two different ways to look at this. Uh, you can see here it says when it's done at maturity, meaning the bonds have, if it's a 10-year bond, we're at the end of the 10 years, there's going to be no gain or loss because the carrying amount equals the face amount, meaning all the discount and premium uh, have been fully amortized. So if you think about that and when you think about the amortization tables that we did, at the very end, that bottom right uh, hand, the carrying value, would be equal to the face value of the bonds. So there's no gains or losses. So if that's the case, we just simply uh, debit bonds payable and credit cash to get them off the books. However, our main issue here is what happens when we extinguish them prior to maturity. Okay, so there's a couple things we have to account for. We have to account for the reacquisition price. That means that's the amount that we are going to pay to our bondholders to pay them off early. And then we're going to compare that to the net carrying value. Okay, so when you see net carrying value, it's no different than that far right hand column of our amortization tables that we've done in the prior videos. Uh, it's just the uh, basically the face value adjusted for any unamortized uh, discount or premium and debt issue cost, but I'm not going to throw that into a problem here. All right, so if the reacquisition price is greater, meaning we pay more than what the carrying value is, it's a loss, and if it's less, it's a gain. Okay, so what I do every time when I do these problems, I will set up uh, kind of, I just call it like my, you know, a template that I use and I set it up in the same format every time. So we'll do this example here. And then the last video in this chapter is just another video, uh, looking at this in a little bit of a different way. So let's walk through this example. All right. So we've got a company, uh, they're, uh, issued, uh, $800,000 worth of bonds at 97. Okay. So what that's saying is they issued 800,000 of bonds at 97. OK, so that means they issued them originally for seven hundred and seventy six thousand, which means there was a twenty four thousand dollar discount. OK, so that was the original information back on January 1, 2000. All right. These are due in 20 years. OK, so eight years after the issue date, we are going to call the entire issue at 101. So that just means 101 percent of face value. That's the reacquisition price. All right, it says they use straight line amortization. So it says calculate the gain or loss and record the entry. All right, so every time I have one of these problems, I set it up like this. I'm going to take the reacquisition price. Because remember, if you look, let me scroll back up here. Really what we're doing right here is we're going to compare these two things. So we need to calculate both of them. All right, so the reacquisition price is 800000 times 101%, so 1.01. So our reacquisition price is 808. Okay, so that's one of the numbers we need. We are now going to compare it to the net carrying value. All right, so remember, net carrying value is our face value. All right, and face is just given in the problem, 800,000. In this case, so we're going to have minus an unamortized discount. Okay, if it was a premium, it'd be plus an unamortized premium. All right, so they said they use straight line. And for this problem, think about it, it's eight years in. If they didn't use straight line, we'd have to set up an amortization table and go all the way through eight years to see how much is unamortized. And we just don't have time for that. All right, so in this problem, it says uh, straight line is used. So basically, they are going to amortize $1,200 per year. All right, now we want the unamortized amount. Okay, so remember, there's two different, you could multiply this by eight. Okay, but the way I do it is I just take the 1200 and multiply it times the 12 years left. Because remember, we want the unamortized, meaning how many years are left to be amortized. Okay, so that would give us 14.4. So real quick, if you would have taken this right here and multiplied times eight years, you would have got 9,600. You would then subtract that from the 24 and get 14.4. Either way works. This way is just one step quicker. All right. So this is going to give me my net carrying value, which works out to be 785,600. All right. So we can see that the reacquisition price is greater. So it's going to be a loss of 22,400. All right. So now it also asks for the journal entry. So let's scroll down. All right. The reason I like setting this template up is because all the numbers, except for this one right here, are going to be my journal entry. And remember, this 785,600 is just a subtotal of two other numbers. So I like setting this up because then I know I need to grab all these numbers and put them into the journal entry. 
All right, so we are sitting at 1108. We're retiring these bonds. All right, so the bonds payable have to come off the books. So 800,000. So that account, so this account would now be zero. That's what we want because we're retiring them. Uh, we have a loss. Remember, loss is our debits. Now, this would probably say in your textbook, like loss on early extinguishment of debt, loss on the retirement of debt, or something like that. So 22.4 is my loss. Don't forget to take the discount on the books. Remember, discounts are debit balance. So this credit is going to close this account out. So 14.4. So this is now zero as well. And then we have to pay the cash for the reacquisition price to retire the bonds. All right. So once again, if you look back up to that, all the calculations we did, we just grab those numbers and bring them down to the journal entry. All right, so this is a, an example of an early retirement of debt. I'm going to do another example that looks at it a little bit different way. Uh, that's probably a little bit harder than this one, but I think hopefully between this one and then the next video, uh, it will really help you come test time of uh, figuring out these problems. So you just really pay attention on tests. If you see something, it's paid off early, retire earlier. It's called, when we talked about callable bonds, this is us calling them early to retire them. Right. So make sure you kind of are aware of those terms and then know to kind of set it up. I'm a big believer in doing things the same way every single time. So, you know, use this template if you like it and just use your do your calculations. And then you have all your numbers right there for your journal entry. All right. So hopefully this will help. Uh, make sure you tune into the next one as well, because I think it will be beneficial uh, and hope you're enjoying these. Please subscribe to the channel and you know, I'll share it with all your uh, friends and classmates. I'll see you next time.